Welcome back to Refined. I'm Gard Swanson. Well, one of the best things about our frigid winter weather is curling up with a good book. And folks who read our Refined December book club pick tell us it was addictively good. They literally couldn't put the book down. That's why we couldn't wait for our monthly get together to talk about it. Our group gathered at the Swank New Heritage Distilling Tasting Room and event space on Capitol Hill to discuss The Mothers by Britt Bennett. It's the story of rebellious 17-year-old Nadia, who covered up an abortion after a romance with the local pastor's son. That decision has widespread consequences, impacting the lives of her friends and her church, which is dominated by a group of strong, judgmental mothers. All right, let's jump right in. We all wanted to talk about this so much. Before we got seated here, let's jump in. What did you all, what did you all think of the mothers? I loved it. I'm a big fan of a love triangle. And that's mm -hmm. what a huge part of this book <laughs> It's like the juicy drama in it, right? Yeah. And I loved the book at first. I couldn't put it down. But then got to the middle and thought, mm, this isn't going the way I want it to. What was the way that you wanted it to go? I don't think I liked their actions as adults. Mm -hmm. I, they made some poor choices. And I kind of felt like Nadia made the choice she made as a young teen. And when she came home and saw that lives went on without her, she regretted it and she sort of damaged a relationship that could have been really good between Luke and Aubrey. Yeah, they didn't always make the decisions I wanted them to either, but I think that's, I don't know, maybe not part of the fun, but like part of the, of the intrigue and part of like why reading fiction is interesting in general. Did either of you find people to, to root for or not to root for? Did you find your well, loyalties really changing? I really loved the mothers, like just that unspoken presence that they were overlooking the church. And I was kind of more into them than actually into Nadia. I was kind of like, who are these people? And it, it really reminded me of, I grew up in the Methodist church and just of the Methodist women. I was like, oh, this is, I could see them in the background trying to like mastermind things and observe. Because I just want to eviscerate Luke. Just, I mean, like, <laughs> that, I just really disliked him and his character. And it felt like he kind of got a pass. And he was the one who was being kind of the, the cheater, the, the guy who went behind each other's backs. I just, I really, I think though so too, though, we need to remember that the loss that all of them had too, he did as well, because yeah. he was supposed to be this football star and he got hurt. And, and then the fact that Nadia chose yeah. to get rid of their baby, even though he wanted it, I think too, she was trying to put in there that it wasn't just female loss in there, it was overall just people's yeah. loss. Why did you guys think that um, Nadia chose not to tell Aubrey about her and Luke? Right, that secret was so far buried. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and it, it seems so little, you know, it, it, something so little, like just, yeah, we went on a couple dates, like we were intimate, and I feel yeah. like that could have changed the path so drastically. That was the thing that I was wish that she did, yeah. was all that to mm -hmm. that relationship. Just to say, yeah, we dated. I think that part of it is that um, Luke, really loved her and she saw that and so then even though it's her best friend and she knew that her best friend was also looking for that she knew that she would find it in him so she didn't know how to talk yeah that's, that's, that's a hard conversation <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? i did like nadia as a character um she she was very curious to me um i wanted to know more about her and what was going to make her happy and, and you know who she was going to end up with and i think that's why i was so upset at the ending to have it be so gray is because I felt like I had followed her on this journey and I really wanted to know, like, did she end up okay? I mean, it was as simple as that. Like, was she okay? Did she, you know, was she happy? Yeah, it doesn't really feel like there is an ending. Yeah. I would read, and with that ending, I would read a follow-up. I, I I enjoyed it enough. I want to know what happened to them. If she wrote, yeah. if she this wrote goes a, out to you, Britt. <laughs> we want a follow-up. Pretty we please. What happened to Nadia? The Ten years later, I mean, yeah. Sweet yeah. Emily High did it, so. <laughs> Refine's book club just keeps getting bigger and better, and we want you to join the fun. Stay tuned to Refine for our January book club pick. It's going to be a good one.